Hey guys, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Mikey Millions, and by popular demand, I'm going to be making a short video series on finance for military personnel. In this video, I'm going to cover something really important that a lot of people just aren't getting. We're going to talk about the TSP, or Thrift Savings Plan. This is similar to a 401k, but it's for military members and federal employees rather than being for people in the private job sector. I was in the Army for about seven years, so this whole series is going to take a military-centric focus but this particular video also applies to federal employees. So if you're a GS, this is for you too. Let's get started. The TSP is one of the best retirement plans on the job market, but at least in the military, TSP account holders don't get nearly enough instruction on how to use this thing. And those that are joining the military now, every single one of you will be on the blended retirement system instead of the old legacy military retirement. And that means all of you need to know what you're doing with the TSP or else you're screwing yourself over and leaving money on the table. And for a demographic that spends $600 a weekend on alcohol, you need all the money you can get. I bet three quarters of you don't even know your TSP login. To be fair, it is kind of a pain to get logged in for the first time. They've got a whole pace plan here, and you're almost certainly going to need to get your account number mailed to your house before you can even get started. But I promise you, it's worth it to get yourself set up. Do this right, and you'll be able to buy a new red Mustang every time your old one gets dirty. I want you guys to be rich. You're serving your country whether you're shoveling rocks behind the motor pool or fighting ISIS. And either way, you deserve to achieve bag. So let's talk about the TSP and how you should use it. So first things first, what is it? The TSP is the military's way of making sure that people who do not complete 20 years of service still walk out with some retirement money. Up until 2018, the military didn't have a retirement plan for you unless you hit 20 years and could walk out with a full pension. And since only 17% of warfighters ever make it to 20 years, which is actually a lot higher than I expected, most people got $0 when they got out of the military. You might get some VA benefits, but no pension. With the new blended retirement system, you are guaranteed something, and if you take advantage of it effectively, you'll earn a whole lot more. So here's how it works. You elect to deduct money straight from your paycheck, and it goes into your TSP to be invested in the stock market on your behalf. The government will put 1% of your base pay into your TSP for investment, even if you choose to personally contribute $0. This is the government's way of making sure everyone gets something when they leave service. But if you do elect to contribute your own money, the government will match up to 5% of your base pay and invest that too. So if you choose to contribute 5% of your base pay for investment in the TSP, the government will add another 5% and you will be investing 10% of your base pay. That's literally free money from the government, and your investment will also grow faster because you have more money invested. I've heard different things about finance in processing at basic training. Depending on where you trained, the finance briefing may have pointed out a block and told you to write a 5 in it to contribute 5%. Or you may have not even had a TSP briefing. This means a lot of troops are not contributing to the TSP, and as a result, you're not taking advantage of getting that 5% match from the government. If you're not using the TSP, and you don't have a personal investment account like Robinhood, you may not be investing at all, and that's just no good. I want to show you how big of a deal it is to make sure that you're investing in the TSP. Let's run an example. If you're an E4 with four years of time in service, you're part of the mafia, then you're making about $31,615 a year in base pay. If you do not make any personal contributions to the TSP, the government will give you your 1% a year and invest about $316 a year for you. Over the last 20 years, the stock market returned about 8% per year, and we should anticipate that being the average for the next 20. Over 20 years, if you make no increase to the TSP yourself, you just let the government contribute and collect that 8% average growth, you'll have accumulated about $15,614 in your TSP. That's something like six months of E4's base pay. Of course, you'd be getting promoted during those 20 years, I hope, so the government's contribution would be higher, but not by a ton. Maybe you'd have 20,000 over 20 years. But if you elected to make a 5% contribution as an E4, you'll be contributing $1,580 per year. The government will match that, and you'll be investing about $3,161 per year. Look what happens to your TSP. Now you're at over $156,000. That's 10 times what you get if you don't contribute. And if you do what I did and contribute 12%, the government will match up to 5%, and you're contributing 17% of your money to the TSP. Over 20 years, that'll reach about $415,000. And if you don't think you can afford it, that 5% figure is only $65 a paycheck as an E4. 
I've seen soldiers spend more than that on their trap phone every month, or on one round of shots. Get your money, you can do it. But some people will want to know, what does it mean to invest in the TSP? Where is your money actually going? This is really, really important because you choose where to invest it. The TSP has five funds in it, C, S, I, F, and G funds. You can choose to invest in one or in a mix of them. There are a lot of videos on the specifics of each, so I won't dive too deep, but just to give you a quick overview. If you choose to invest in the C fund, you're making an investment into the S&P 500. That's the 500 largest US companies. The C fund tends to perform really well and has good diversification, and that's where I personally put 100% of my TSP when I was in service. The S&P does indeed perform really well over time, with generally 8% compounding returns, but it does vary widely year to year. But for some people, this may not be the best fund for you. The S&P 500 companies are the 500 largest in the US, but maybe you don't want to buy the largest. Maybe you want to invest in the up and coming companies. After all, big old companies don't grow like they did when they were young. And if you only invested in these 20 years ago, you'd have missed out on some of the best growing years for companies like Netflix. If you want those up and coming companies, you need the S fund instead. The S fund invests in the US completion total stock market index, which captures companies with more risk than the 500 largest, but also more growth potential. We're talking Square, Uber, Snapchat, Workday. You'll find some of these in the S&P 500 C fund, but the concentration is much higher in the S fund. Over the last 20 years, the S fund actually did better than the C fund. And if you expect that to continue, you can take higher risk and invest in the S fund. But what if you don't really like the US stock market? What if you think the Fed is printing too much, we're going into debt, the dollar will collapse and we'll go into a depression? Or what if you just think that other countries will do better than the US? For that, we go to the I fund. The international fund invests in 20 developed countries other than the US. So you will own companies that you cannot buy on the S&P 500. And if you think the dollar will collapse, owning these international companies will protect you from most of that decline because they will go up in value relative to the dollar. If none of that risk sounds like your thing, you can choose the F fund. This is a bond fund, so you would be lending your money to the US government and very large companies, and they will pay interest into your TSP. It is much less volatile than the stock funds above, but you won't see huge gains because bonds will not increase in value 30% in a year like a stock can. That doesn't mean you can't make money here. If the Fed lowers interest rates, the F fund will do very well. If the Fed lowers interest rates to negative like some people are predicting, or just back to zero, suddenly your F fund's 1% interest bond is worth a lot of money, since new bonds are now garbage. However, the F fund almost always performs worse than stock funds, so unless you are afraid of loss, this probably isn't what you need. And last, I hate this one, the G fund. The G fund takes your money and puts it into financial instruments created just for the G fund that are guaranteed by the US government to not lose value and pay a small percentage of interest. This sound is good, but the amount of interest you get from the G fund is so small that it generally takes about 20 years for your investment to double. That's almost three times as long as what you get with the S&P 500. You will not make a ton of money off the G fund. And if all this is too much, there's another option. You can choose a life path fund, also called a target date fund. You tell TSP when you expect to retire, and TSP will invest in a diverse mix of the other funds for you and adjust them as time goes on. This is a good alternative if you don't know what else to do. But here's why I hate the G fund, because it is the default. If you do not make a selection of which fund to invest in, it's going into the G fund. And when the S&P gained 18% in 2020, the G fund gained less than 1%. Young people in the military with guaranteed paychecks should take more risk than the G fund. But since it is your default investment, most people invest in the G fund, and that is a mistake. If you never log into your TSP account, this is all you're getting. It absolutely killed me when I met an Air Force NCO who spent 18 years contributing to the G fund only because he never logged in to change it. He could have had hundreds of thousands if he had just bothered to log into the TSP one time and change his election. You can see how important it is to use the TSP correctly, but I bet most people watching this video don't even know how to log in. My recommendation to you is to stop what you're doing, go to tsp.gov and see if you can get in. You probably won't have your account number or have a login set up. You'll have to jump through some hoops and get the number mailed to you, and then work on setting up your login from there. But once you're in, my non-professional recommendation is to go 100% into the C fund or into the Life Path fund. 
Read up on whether or not the Roth or traditional versions is the right tax plan for you, but unless you have a six-figure side hustle, I can all but promise you that military folks are better off with the Roth. When you get out of the military, even if it's after only four years, you'll likely have at least a mid-five-figure account balance. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and guardians, and coasties, please set up your TSP. Commanders and senior enlisted advisors at all levels, I want to issue you a challenge. I challenge you to offer your soldiers a three-day pass if they can demonstrate that they know how to log in to their TSP. I bet you less than 20% of them can do it. And in fact, I bet you most of them go to TSP.com and end up suffering a phishing attack. And further, if they can demonstrate that they can not only log in, but they also know what they're investing in, then I challenge you to give them a four-day pass. I promise you, you will suddenly have every soldier under your command chomping at the bit to get their retirement accounts in order. I promise you, it will be the most impactful thing you can do during your command. Whether you have a 50-person signal company or a 500-person battalion headquarters company, I promise you that getting all of those soldiers on board with their finances will have more of an impact on your troops than any other decision you can make as a commander. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. If you're not in the military or federal service yourself, but you know someone who is, please go ahead and forward this video to them. You would be astonished how many military folks and federal service members do not have their TSPs set up correctly. You could be having a huge impact on them by letting them know how it's done correctly. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.